As the prevailing level-headed people of the internet have vigorously campaigned, Assassin's Creed Unity is one of the most underrated and overlooked titles in recent memory. It somehow looks next-gen, even by 2021 standards, and the scope of Ubisoft's vision for a historically grounded open world has few worthy contenders. You've probably heard this before. I'm not here to piggyback on what others have argued. I'm not even really a reviewer. I've mostly liked every entry in the series thus far, and I think each game is far more different than they are similar, even when there's only a one year gap in between releases, which is a death sentence for a community such as this one, but a challenge for me. To me, each entry tries a wide variety of different tactics to build immersion and make their cities feel authentic and lived in. So much so that I think the development teams could learn a thing or two, still, from Unity's visual storytelling techniques and the beauty in its details. A little detail somewhere way down the line makes you say, <gasps> It unrelentingly floods players with the experience of traversing revolutionary Paris. Where many have droned on and on about the big picture features like one-to-one -one impressive scaling of Notre Dame or the shimmer and awe design of the Palace of Versailles, I wanted to focus on some of the more intricate aspects to the open world that I think are just as impressive. It begins with this. Did you catch that? I hope so because its presence on a random door on a random street is direct evidence of Ubisoft's dedication to its history. It's a political cartoon pamphlet, possibly an exact replica of one of hundreds that every one of these NPCs would be familiar with. Think of them as potentially inappropriate 18th century memes that made fun of certain political figures or often just stated the obvious in a shamelessly depressing way. Among the historian community, they are sometimes referred to as flatulent fatties because of how childish the humor is. Poor, poor, helpless Marie Antoinette was buried by these until her merciful death sentence, reminding you that public humiliation was a weapon of the masses, and one they weren't afraid to use. In all seriousness, though, I can't even post more of these because some of them are so eye-opening they'd probably surprise 4chan. Still, point made, devs. A splendid application of a small window into French Revolution Paris's mood, but it left me hungry for more. Our next stop is, well, well, what do we have here? A little less silly and a little more serious. This post refers to the Law of Suspects, or Loi, as its title contends. A law which effectively terrified neighborhoods across Paris into thinking that they were going to be put on trial by the Committee for Public Safety and guillotined for treason. That's just paranoia though, right? Was their fear unfounded? Over a one-year period during the Reign of Terror, Paris saw over 200,000 people detained because of this career. You bet these NPCs would post this on their doors. Well done, Ubisoft. An exact one-to-one -one recreation yet again. It's around now that I should mention that I have minimal concern for the specific years or locations that this game throws around. A common complaint is that pamphlets or posts like these wouldn't be seen before or after a certain date. They aren't wrong, but it's absurd to let this blind us while we are walking through such vividly authentic streets that absolutely nail some of the most important themes of the revolution. Let's move on though, because Paris is disgusting. Yes, the streets would be a little wider, even more vomit inducing, but what I want to focus on next is why someone would do this. I thought Paris was the place they sing about in Beauty and the Beast, not Les Miserables. Another common sight, graffiti, littering back alleys and homes. What the devs got right here, yes, there were massive amounts of revolutionary language written around all these people. What they got slightly wrong. It's probably more likely found on different monuments as they were paid for with those same taxes that helped to starve the poor. We can't just go defacing a random statue though. People might think this game is too good. So we'll end this section on close enough. I'm still addicted to finding more. Speaking of more, there are more signs and posters about. Some just as important as the ones mentioned earlier, but now for a less violent reason. A few of these add to the feeling that life still went on in the background of the revolution, regardless of how many people were singing about change. Opera, a comedy poster, a clothing sale. 
I was absolutely mesmerized by just how real all this felt. Even better, bougie sections of the city tend to have more of these types of posters than the slums. Outstanding. It couldn't send a more thematic message that the rich were actively trying to ignore the plight of their neighbors across the Seine. They might be trying to ignore neighbors in close proximity, but that isn't stopping the news from grounding Paris in France's meaningless conflict with the Habsburgs, just to keep the anger directed at the royalists. I wasn't able to find this exact news clip because it doesn't exist. There's a few words here that wouldn't have been used during this time period, but make no mistake, I absolutely love this. If someone picks this paper up and has to Google it to make sense of it, I'm all in regardless of its translations. And so we've come at last to the final stop on our journey and possibly the most commendable, the artwork. Now, I purposely am steering away from the hundreds of statues because A, and B, Ubisoft was clear they weren't allowed to recreate religious images, and so we'd potentially be running in circles around what inspired them. Instead, I want to focus on the ones that so many people missed. Here we have one of many iconic sites, the Cemetery of the Innocents. A spooky, skull-filled courtyard with a story to tell. On the walls, murals contextualize the dancing death, an eerie symbol for the horror that was the bubonic plague, which devastated Paris, killing nearly a million people by some estimates. Now I'm no historical digital reconstructionist using the Google on the internet machine to bring historical images back to life, but if I was, I would be afraid for my job right now because of how good this looks. It's like walking through a museum, only you have some Doctor Strange magic to look back in time. But museums are mostly filled with historic paintings. Is unity? Well, yes and no. I almost immediately recognized the funeral of Patroclus and the victory of Neptune and Aphrodite, but most of these are zoomed in versions of each other and literally every single person on this wall looks like an out of place anomaly. We'll end here because I'm not about to feel disappointed and I shouldn't be, but look, I even caught them red handed copying and pasting the same posts. Regardless, Saying there should be more of these incredibly detailed historical Easter eggs is some really, really high praise. Potentially even the highest praise I can give. Do you know how hard this is to recreate this for a PlayStation 4? Do you? I'm, I'm genuinely asking because I'm stunned, still. At their most impressive, these are pieces that help to bake an immensely satisfying French Revolution pie that looks as good as it tastes. At their worst, you'll stop looking because you've seen the same thing over and over again. It's an enormous step in the right direction though, and hopefully one that becomes more appreciated and utilized in the future.